The fire department of New York City decided to backtrack on what they said earlier about hunting down the firefighters who booed Letitia James and cheered Donald Trump. There were earlier reports of an internal email from Brass that generated half a week of bad press for the department. But now the FDNY is saying that at no point has there been an investigation into members booing. Hmm. So it looks like a big, huge win for Trump. A New York City Council member, Joanne Ariola, compared it when Mayor Bill de Blasio was booed by the police department on multiple occasions and we all saw what happened to the police department during the de Blasio administration and how it was destroyed and dismantled. They said they cannot allow remnants from that administration to do that to our firefighters. In other recent news, Judge Scott McAfee is allowing Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis to continue on the election subversion case against Donald Trump, but she was forced to lose special prosecutor Nathan Wade after an embarrassing two months that will put Willis and Wade on trial themselves over their romantic relationship. It's a technical legal win for Fannie Willis since she may continue along with her full office prosecuting Trump and 14 others. But McAfee's 23-page opinion, it was a scathing rebuke of the district attorney's actions and it remains very unclear if Trump will face trial before November on his actions after the 2020 presidential election. His supporters are saying that Trump is the true winner in the decision on Fannie Willis in the Georgia case. So will Trump come out on top of Willis and James? It's definitely looking like it. The breakdown and the takedown all in today's video, so don't go away, guys. Some political commentators, they're saying that New York Attorney General Letitia James laid the groundwork for those boos herself. Check this out from Fox News Panel. It was like the, the beginning, the booing was loud, but then you had just like a bed music of Trump, Trump, Trump. It kind of helped the whole night flow a little bit. A little, <laughs> not for her. But, <laughs> she but didn't the, go uh, this sentiment is what you get, not when you try people, when you don't try criminals, and when you obsess over Donald Trump, and you sit in the front row and you gloat and kick your shoes off and give little speeches after each uh, day on trial, mm. and then gloat on Twitter every day how much interest Donald Trump has to pay every day he doesn't come up with the ridiculous amount of money of $450 million. So you lay the groundwork for anger and bitterness, and a lot of firefighters say, you know, Donald Trump is my guy. He's very popular with cops. He's very popular with firefighters. And why she came out at a promotional ceremony, she does it at her own peril. When you're a public figure, you know at any moment, we know it at Fox, you can get booed or cheered. That comes with the territory. Tough. That's why it came as no surprise to me when the fire department of New York backtracked their earlier comments about investigating the firefighters. Now they're reversing course and they're saying that at no point has there been an investigation into members booing, even after we saw those reports about an internal email from Brass that generated half a week of bad press for the fire department. Some even say that all firefighters should have staged a walkout until those threats are retracted and an apology be given. People are just outraged that they dared threatening firefighters for practicing their First Amendment rights. You know what I mean? So FDNY Chief of Department John Hodgins was said to have emailed high-ranking FDNY officials saying that the Fire Department's Bureau of Investigations and Trials is investigating this so that they will figure out who the members are. He even supposedly said that he recommends they come forward and that it would be better for them to come forward and the officials don't have to hunt them down. That definitely did not sit well with a lot of people. The purported persecution fired up current and former members of the department's rank and file as well as the public. Staten Island attorney Louis Gerlamino, along with partner Mark Fonte of F&G Legal Group, had offered to represent any firefighters under departmental investigation pro bono for free. They said that the FDNY officials were making a mountain out of a molehill in the sense that it was a smattering of booze when Letitia James took the stage. It wasn't a real outpouring. It was a smattering at best. And then it was about like 15 or 20 seconds of Trump chants. That's it. So FDNY spokesperson Jim Long tried to play it down saying that nobody's hunting anyone down, that they were looking into those who clearly broke department regulations. Long said it has nothing to do with politics. It's about professionalism at an official event held in a house of worship. But like I said, when I first heard them saying that, so why the need to clarify that they're not hunting anyone down? You know what I mean? Must be something to that. Plus, you know how much trouble they were in for when, after all the outrage, the department had to further soften its language, saying that instead of investigations, they were having ongoing conversations with their members about decorum during department events to ensure that they are upholding the core values that make the FDNY the greatest fire department in the world. That sure sounds like some backpedaling to me. I mean, New York City Fire Commissioner Laura Kavanaugh has also had a rocky tenure. 
She was never a firefighter before joining the FDNY as a civilian official in 2017. After becoming a commissioner, she feuded with her own former top chiefs last year when they asked to be demoted in response to her policies. That's why the lawyers said that she needs to do a better job of connecting with the rank and file again. Now, just a quick pause here, you guys. If you guys are enjoying the discussion and you're finding the content informative, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel and sharing the videos totally do help too. It really helps support the work that we do on the channel and allows me to bring even more more content, detail analysis, and updates like this. And of course, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future content. I totally appreciate you guys. All right, so let's get back to it. Now, still in support of those firefighters that booed Attorney General Letitia James and chanted the name of former President Donald Trump, New York City Councilwoman Joanne Ariola warned that there should be no retribution for this. She compared it to the time Mayor Bill de Blasio was booed by the police department on multiple occasions and how they all saw what happened to the police department during the de Blasio administration and how it was ultimately destroyed and dismantled. Ariola warned that we cannot allow remnants from that administration to do that to our firefighters. Ariola said that firefighters should be protected under the constitution. They absolutely should not lose their jobs as this was their first amendment right. Some commentators even argue that Letitia James booing was warranted given that it's usually the city mayor that's invited to promotion ceremonies like that. Not to mention her legal cases against Trump which many of his supporters say are a part of a bigger political witch hunt against the former president. I read some comments that say Letitia James should be locked up for treason. What do you guys think about that? And speaking of lawyers who have it out for Trump, did you guys hear about Georgia DA Fannie Willis? So Judge Scott McAfee announced his decision already for allowing Fannie Willis to continue on the election subversion case against Donald Trump. But she was forced to lose special prosecutor Nathan Wade after an embarrassing two months that put Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade on trial themselves over their romantic relationship. So Willis scored a legal victory here since she and her team can keep going after former President Donald Trump and 14 others. But McAfee wasn't exactly handing out compliments in his 23-page critique of how Fannie Willis handled things. Some even said it was a scathing rebuke of the district attorney's actions. Now, it's still up in the air about whether or not Trump will end up in court before November for his post-2020 election actions. So McAfee decided it was a choice between Wade and Willis staying on the case because of what he called odor of mendacity remains over the circumstances of their relationship. Wade didn't waste much time after that, resigning just a few hours later. He said he was stepping down in the interest of democracy, in dedication to the American public, and to move the case forward as quickly as possible. But yeah, guys, Fannie Willis survives, but the DA and her case are definitely wounded. So Fannie Willis managed to dodge getting kicked off the case, but the whole drama about her and Nathan Wade definitely left a bit of a mark. This isn't just about what happens in court, where you can bet potential jurors have heard the gossip. It's also out there in the open, with people watching very closely as they decide whether Trump gets another shot at the presidency in November. Now, McAfee didn't hold back in criticizing Willis and Wade, calling out their relationship as being the result of bad choices. But what he did point out, according to Georgia law, making poor choices, even a bunch of them, isn't enough to say that there's a legal conflict of interest. Both Willis and Wade ended up testifying in the hearing, and let me tell you, when Willis hit the stand, it was quite Quite the scene. She walked into the courtroom ready to clap back at the accusations. However, when Judge McAfee gave his verdict, he wasn't exactly cheering about Willis's passionate testimony, calling it unprofessional of the Georgia DA. The judge wrote that his finding is by no means an indication that the court condones this tremendous lapse in judgment or unprofessional manner of the district attorney's testimony during the evidentiary hearing. Now, let me tell you guys, Trump just keeps on racking up the pretrial wins. The ruling on Friday is kind of a win-win for Trump, helping him buy time in his fight against four criminal charges and giving him a chance to kind of flip the script on the prosecutors going after him. So Trump's legal team has been pretty savvy using all sorts of tactics to kind of push back the trial dates that could have kept him off the campaign trail this year. So over in Washington, Trump's case about trying to mess with the election is on pause. The Supreme Court, they're set to listen to arguments in April about whether he's got immunity from all this. Meanwhile, in Florida, a judge appointed by Trump himself is expected to pick a new date for the trial over over the classified documents pretty soon, following a discussion about when to do it a couple of weeks back. But then of course there's New York where Trump was about to face trial in no time, but now it's been pushed back to at least mid-April. Why? Because of tens of thousands of new pages of evidence that have been turned
turned over by the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan. But it's not just about delay. Trump's defense is also playing offense. They're trying to turn the spotlight from his heap of charges to poking holes in the credibility of his prosecutors and shaking people's trust in the legal system. McAfee highlighted on Friday how even the hint of a conflict, if the public sees it that way, can shake their faith in the justice system. Letting that slide, he pointed out, could really hurt the legitimacy and the moral authority of what he calls the weakest branch of government. So McAfee also criticized the speech Fannie Willis did in her church and even suggested that a gag order could follow. During the speech earlier this year, Willis defended Wade, suggesting that he was being targeted because he was a black man. The speech in January got dragged into this whole debate by the defendants. They argued Willis was publicly shaming Trump and his legal team and risking a fair trial. McAfee said that the comments were far enough removed from a jury trial that it would not establish a, a permanent taint of the jury pool and said that the court cannot find that this speech crossed the line to the point where the defendants have denied the opportunity for a fundamentally fair trial or that it requires the district attorney's disqualification. But he also added that it was still legally improper as this type of public comment creates dangerous waters for the district attorney to wade further into. Now, as for shutting down any more public comments by the state about the case via an official gag order on Fannie Willis, the judge said that the time may well have arrived for an order preventing the state from mentioning the case in any public forum to prevent prejudiciary publicity that is not the motion presently before the court. Now, I'm telling you guys, Trump is the true winner in this decision on Fannie Willis in the Georgia case. Trump and his team have managed to chip away at her image as a fair prosecutor just out for justice, painting her instead as a public servant who let her personal feelings cloud her judgment. The latest news on Friday is a big deal. The case in Georgia has been seen as one of the strongest ones against Trump. It's different from the federal cases because even if Trump wins in 2024's election, he can't just wave it away. He doesn't have the power to fire the prosecutor or pardon himself in Georgia like he might want with federal charges. And Willis isn't out of the woods either. She's still on the case, but she's facing more challenges. The state legislature is already taking steps to investigate her, and there's a state panel that has the power to remove district attorneys like her. On top of that, the state bar and the ethics commission could decide to step in too. It's very clear that the road ahead is filled with a lot of uncertainties and implications, not just for the individuals involved, but for the legal system and the political landscape as a whole. So as this story unfolds, you can be sure we'll be right here breaking it down, offering all the insights that you guys need to stay informed. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found today's video helpful and subscribe to stay updated on this and many other stories that are shaking up our country. And hey, don't forget to drop your thoughts in the comments section down below, maybe your questions. As always, I love hearing from you guys. I'll see you on the next one.